Day weekend, and what better way to spend it than to watch some NASCAR modified racing in Oswego, New York. Only four races left of the season, and the battle of the championship is as fierce as ever. It's the Mod Squad, up next on NBC Sports. Welcome to the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150 from Oswego Speedway in Oswego, New York. I'm Rick Allen. PA announcers Mike Lisikowski and Joe Murata will have the call of the racing action, and Jesse Punch will be trackside. Taking a look at the weather tonight, a warm 79 degrees, a slight breeze from the southeast, and no chance of rain. Earlier today during qualifying, Matt Hirschman had the fastest lap at 17.575 seconds, just barely beating out Doug Kobe for the pole position and almost getting a new track record. Let's hear from Hirschman on his thoughts going into tonight's race. We've been good all day. I mean, we usually are good here. I mean, we're always usually up uh, up in the front uh, contending for the win. Uh, it's first or second. It's been in this race uh, for quite a few years. So we're usually right there, and I, w I would expect the same uh, tonight. I hope uh, that we're in contention to win, and so far the day's gone well. The team's done a good job, and uh, we'll just uh, – it's still 150 laps ahead of us. Uh, you don't know when the cautions are going to come. We've had some really long green runs in this race, and uh, pitch strategy plays into that and uh, we'll just see when the cautions come and uh, hopefully like you said at the end of the at the end of the race we're in contention to win not only does Hirschman run well here but so does Ron Silk who's in the race for the championship for more we send it down to Jesse Punch the back and forth battle for the drivers championship between John McKennedy and Ron Silk continues tonight which is four races left in the season. McKennedy who's on the hunt for his very first wheel and modified tour championship enters tonight's competition just three points ahead of Silk. He qualified sixth but he told me he's still pretty uncertain about what tonight's competition holds considering he's never finished inside the top 15 here at Oswego. Ron Silk on the other hand he's a winner here at this track and has only ever finished in the top 10. Despite having qualified ninth, he tells me they have plenty of speed and it may be difficult to pass here, but he's confident they can make up some ground. Thanks, Jesse. And now for the call of the racing action, we send it to the PA announcers, Mike Lisikowski and Joe Murata. Thank you, Rick. It is a glorious day for racing here in the Finger Lakes region of the Empire State as the Steel Palace, the Oswego Speedway, hosts the 66th running of the International Classic Weekend, welcoming the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour as the chase for the championship comes into clear focus for the 2022 season. 150 laps, the caution laps will be counted, so drivers will have to be very careful on their pit strategies to not go a lap down. And as you mentioned, fuel and tires the tires being the primary concern for pit stops as many teams believe they could go the distance on fuel but would be at such a disadvantage with worn tires at that point point. and a quick look at the starting field here as the pace truck makes its way down the covered grandstand front straightaway of this venerable facility in upstate new york starting in 25th is walter sutcliffe jr starting in 24th melissa fivefield Starting in 23rd spot, Gary McDonald. The 22nd place starter, Ken Hagee. 21st place starter, Tyler Ripkema. Starting from 20th position, it's Donnie Leah. Starting in the 19th position, Andrew Kraus. 18th position starter is Brian Roby. Starting from the 17th position, it's J.B. Fortin. Kyle Ebersole starts from the 16th position. Chuck Hosfeld starting in 15th spot. In the 14th starting position, it's Mike Leedy. Starting in 13th, it's Eric Goodale. Starting in the 12th position, it's Anthony Cecily. Starting in the 11th position, it's Austin Beers. 10th place starter is Tommy Catalano. 9th position belongs to Ron Silk. Launching from the 8th position, it's Bobby Santos III. In the 7th starting spot, it's Justin Bonsignor. 6th place starter is John McKennedy. Fifth position starter, Patrick Emmerling, and the green flag is out. Entering turn number one, the fourth place starter, Craig Lutz. Third position starter, Kyle Bonsignor. Second place starter, Doug Kobe in the Tommy Baldwin Racing number seven, and about to lead lap number one in the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150. Your pole position starter, Matt Hirschman from Northampton, Pennsylvania. Hirschman brings him down the front straightaway with Kobe and Bonsignor riding in the top three and back there in the number four spot is Lutz. Lutz takes a good look out of the inside coming out of turn number two and down the back straightaway. But they all go single file down in between turns number three and four and bringing them down out of turn four, it's Hirschman. 
some side-by-side -side action there inside the top 10 positions as the entire field makes its way around this big speedway. You see the foam block lined corners. Oswego Speedway was one of the first facilities in America to put those safer foam barriers along the outside wall. And here we see championship contender in the 16, Ronnie Silk, just ahead of a side-by-side -side battle between the 64 machine and the 44 of Santos. Santos on the outside in that black 44 car. He is a former modified tour champion. And we see him going side by side with Austin Beers, the second generation Pennsylvania driver. A heated battle there. Your fourth, just behind the 51 of Onsignor. Your fourth place running car, Craig Lutz. He tries to go to the outside coming off of turn number two. He falls right back in the line, but there's top four cars are hooked right together. Hirschman turning laps in the 18203 bracket, so uh, they're not slowing down at all. They're setting a quick pace. And now we see contact between the 07 of Emmerling and the 64 machine. Emmerling drops back about a position and a half there as young Austin Beers made wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact in that battle. That battle for the ninth position there. Again, Santos in the 44. He's coming off of a sprint car victory in Pennsylvania just a week or so ago, and he is right in that battle with Catalano on the outside and Emmerling in the 07 just in front of him. Ronnie Silk in car number 16, running seventh, is turning the fastest laps of the race. He went an 18-175. He's still riding back in that number seven spot, but boy, has he got heat in those tires as he moves off at turn number two and down the back straightaway. He has pulled just away from this battle that we're watching, and you had predicted early that he was going to be the guy to mash the hammer because of his starting spot and because of his position in the championship chase. And we see now Santos falling just a little bit back in this battle for seventh, eighth, ninth. Catalano is the red car on the outside, and just beneath him, Boy, there's action all over the speedway here as yeah. Emmerling in the 07 leads this side-by-side -side battle. It's Catalano and Santos. And just behind them, we see the 14 machine of Mike Leedy. Leedy with a couple of wins in the Race of Champions Tour this season and making several starts as well on the NASCAR Tour. Catalano, who's running the number 11 spot, keeps going up onto the outside part of the speedway. He's trying to clear some traffic. He can it because they're right quick on the inside. Mike Leedy is back in the number 13 spot in Ford car number 14, and he is also trying that inside lane, and now he gets shuffled a little bit coming off of turn number two, but Hirschman sets the quick pace as we've got 10 completed laps this time around 11. Heated action here, bumper to bumper. Meanwhile, up front, top four cars pulling away. They are nose to tail, and as you predicted, Joe, they're not fighting it out. They're pulling away. They're bumper to bumper, but not much of a... Oh, here we see a first challenge. Lutz in the fourth spot has now taken away the number three position. That's car number 82, as he has now moved up to the number three spot, and he could be wearing the hot shoes right now as he looks down to the inside and draws in on the top two. Kobe running second. Hirschman, your leader. And now we send it down to the pits to Jesse Punch. Matt Hirschman continues to lead this race early on, on his way to what could be his fourth overall modified win here at Oswego. And if he were to get win number 14, that would put him on top of the modern day mods wins list here at this racetrack. Just one win above modified legend Richie Evans. Now, I talked to Hirschman before the race, and to no surprise, he didn't show too much emotion surrounding the situation, but he did share with me that Oswego was special for him. He says it's his favorite race track. He remembers coming here in his early days of his career and just hoping to qualify and make the race. Well, tonight he leads this race from the pole and is on his way to making history here at his favorite track. Thanks, Jesse. And now Catalano in that red 54 machine, as we saw him running the outside lane alongside Emmerling, he's changed lanes to the inside and now quickly pulls away by two or three car lengths from the Emmerling 07 car. Let's see if the 44 machine of Santos the third can make a similar move. There's the two of Chuck Hosfeld part of that battle. Hosfeld, a New York driver with nine career wins in the Wheel and Modified Tour, driving that number two machine. He's one of the top-notch modified racers, but he has been terrible at retiring. He's attempted a about three different times to call it a career and keeps getting good quality rides like this number two machine as we see Emmerling now on the outside with 
The 44 of Santos was just a moment ago challenging Emmerling, and now it's the two machine of Hosfeld who's trying to take that spot away from Santos. And Catalano seems to be closing the gap up for the leaders in front of him. He is wrong running 10th. He's trying to close in on the number nine spot. So he's got some heat in those tires, and he is really rolling. As we watch Emmerling, Santos in the 44, and the two of Hosfeld performing relatively equal. Haas Hosfeld in the two is right on the back bumper of the 44. These guys are going to make a change of position here very soon. But as you mentioned, Catalano pulled away by maybe 10 or 12 car lengths as soon as he got around the 07 of Emmerling. So he's really making a charge toward the front. I'm watching lap times, and your leader, Matt Hirschman, has dropped down to 18.4, where the rest of the pack behind him are 18.3s. So uh, that could be a factor. But he may be backing off just a little bit to save that equipment. The 82 of Lutz, who already made an early race pass for the third position. He is closing up just a little bit more on Kobe in the seven. Kobe with multiple victories this season on the Wheel and Modified Tour. Lutz has one victory so far this season, and he was a winner last year as well. So three top-notch competitors showing the way here with 129 laps to go in the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150 from Oswego. Your quick car right now is the seven of Doug Kobe. He's running to the number two spot. You're watching the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour on NBC Sports. Welcome back to the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour on NBC Sports. At this point, we expect to see the pace truck with the lights extinguished moving pit side and resume green flag racing as lap 31. Now on the scoreboard, side-by-side -side double foul restarts throughout this event with Hirschman in the 60 on the inside. Many-time champion Doug Kobe in the 7NY on the outside. Lutz restarts from third with Kyle Bonsignor in fourth. And look at Lutz work on the bottom part of the speedway. He drag races off at turn number two to try to come up with that number two position going down into turn number three. Lutz on the bottom, Kobe on the outside in car number seven, and a drag race off of turn number four. Maybe some slight contact there, just maybe, but Kobe in the outside lane, not necessarily the place to be here as they head into turn number three. Kobe maintains the spot and takes the inside lane back. Now it's the Bonsignor Cousins right on the heels of Lutz in that orange machine. The 22 of Kyle and the 51 of defending series champion Justin Bonsignor. And we got trouble right down below. Right on the front stretch. A multi-car accident brings out the caution. There we see the 44 of Santos getting turned back around. Replay coming to us here as we see, oh, Fortin got turned around on the front stretch. There was contact made there. Didn't see the number of the car. And then everyone's spinning to avoid it. Almost no contact. Four <laughs> cars going That's around on amazing. the front stretch. And great judgment by all of those drivers. Maybe even deliberate spins to avoid that contact. And success there as we see Santos now rolling back out onto the speedway after yet another pit stop. You're watching the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour on NBC Sports. Back to the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150. Now the pace truck set to head to the infield of the Oswego Speedway. We are on lap 40 of 150. Matt Hirschman in car number 60 will bring us back up to full speed on the front straightaway, and we're green. And a hammer down here in the front straightaway. Hirschman back up in that number one spot. But Kobe on the outside trying to get a run in that number two spot. Can't do it. He pulls back in line. And then luck back there in the number three spot. Bonsignor in car number 22 running in the number four spot. So the top four cars all glued right together. Bonsignor looking down onto the inside. Bonsignor up to the number four spot. That is Justin as he takes away that number four position. And they all shuffle around. And moving up just a little bit, Eric Goodell in car number 58 moves up to the number nine spot. So cars turning great times, almost all exact times. Goodale, a championship contender, and championship contender Bonsignor in the 51, that is Justin Bonsignor, making a pass of his cousin for fourth spot. Cousin Kyle, now a resident of the state of Illinois, and he commutes to these races on the East Coast regularly, even though that car stays in Connecticut. And the Illinois cousin of Justin, only 10 months younger. Many folks are mistaken and believe that these are brothers, but only 10 months apart as cousins. And the now Illinois resident of Kyle Bonsignor back into fifth spot with defending series champion Justin Bonsignor in fourth. And a few car lengths then that he's going to need to make up to challenge Lutz for the third position. I'll tell you a car to keep your eyes on. The 16 of Ronnie Silk. He is running back there in the number seven spot. 
but he seems to have the zip to go up to the outside anytime he wants to. He moves coming out of turn number four. He could be in a great spot back there in that number seven position. Austin Beers runs right behind him in car number 64 as they travel down into the tricky number three corner. Down in the short shoot off of turn four. Hirschman exits turn four in great shape. And Hirschman turned a 18186. Good, good lap time. Hirschman has got everything in control. We saw Justin Bonsignor pass Kyle, and as you see the top three drivers with a couple of car lengths there, it doesn't seem that Justin Bonsignor has been able to close the gap whatsoever on Craig Lutz's number 82 machine as Lutz in third with Kobe in second. Those three cars seeming to maintain that gap between the Bonsignor cousins, and then it's John McKennedy right behind Kyle Bonsignor. But that gap holding even between Lutz in third and Bonsignor in fourth. And again, it comes down to this idea of saving tires and equipment. But what's amazing me is the top three, top four, are turning almost identical times lap after lap. And we are approaching lap number 50, one third of the way into the event. As we have now hit lap 50, you're exactly right about those lap times and drivers who are wise and drivers who have lots of laps in these cars know how to hit their marks, as they say. And identical laps are the way to a victory because if you can hit those marks every single time and maintain consistency, that's less tire wear. And that's showing for the top three who now are pulling even farther away from the Bonsignor Cousins in the 51 and 22 cars that we see on the screen. The top three pulling away and turning almost identical times. 18-2, 18-2, 18-2. And now Kyle Bonsignor takes a peek to the inside of Justin. They swapped that position several laps ago. Kyle may have the faster car right now. As we noticed, Justin not able to cling to the rear bumper of what's in third. And Kyle may be looking for a way around his cousin again. They shuffle around down in between turns number three and four. Bring it high off of turn number four. Boy, they got high off of that number four corner. But Hirschman again going in 18-3, one of his slower laps, and so did the other cars right behind, also turning in 18-3. Let's taking a look to the inside of Kobe. While Hirschman has put enough car lengths between himself and Kobe to be all alone on your screen for just a moment, Lutz in that orange 82 car just a moment ago was nipping at the heels of Kobe, but we learned in the early laps that Kobe, when he needs to, can pick up those laps times just a little bit to maintain that runner-up position. I see a battle picking up for the number four, number five spot between the Bontier boys. The number 51 and 22, they're running real close together. And Ronnie Silk, back there in car number 16, still holding on to the number seven spot. Chuck Hosfeld has now moved up to the number eight position. Bonsignor battle there we saw for just a moment, but there they come into turn number one, and Kyle seemed to have the inside lane on the front straightaway, but tucked right back in behind his cousin. A heated battle of cousins here. Kyle in the 22 car, Justin in the 51. Justin so far this season has two victories, but he's a three-time champion. The champion of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour in 2018, 2020, and 2021. And when I talked to Kyle, the driver of the 22 car earlier today, he told me a story that right here at Oswego Speedway, he broke his ankle driving in the Focus Midget Series under the USAC sanction. And when he returned here for the first time in a modified, he was a little bit concerned about the front straightaway wall where he had a vicious crash in that midget several years earlier. But now, as we mentioned, the New York native, a resident of Illinois, chasing down his cousin, the defending champion, Justin Bonson. You're in the 51 machine. You know who's picking it up? It's Craig Lutz. Car number 82 right in the number three spot. He has been inside and outside. Kobe, watch him go down the back straightaway into turn number three. He kicks it up to the outside, now pulls back in the lane. But watch him drop right down to the inside, coming out at turn number four and try and get in the run here in the front straightaway. That battle happening just in front of the Bonsignor action that we're watching here. The Bonsignor battle is for fourth. Lutz is has several car lengths ahead of this battle in third spot, but the Bonsignors are really going at it tooth and nail here. As we've got 90 laps to go, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour from the Oswego Speedway will be right back. Back to the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour on NBC Sports. 
Doug Kobe now up into that number one position, and we're just shy. Actually, we're right here at the halfway point, 75 in, 75 to go. So we've got another race, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to be interesting watching Hirschman charge from the number nine spot. Hirschman back in ninth as a result of the pit folly that we witnessed there. And now you've got to take the guy who's noted for conservative racing and saving tires. As you mentioned, he has to come from ninth on the grid. Is that something he's wanting to do immediately, or will he save those tires expecting a couple more cautions for the end? I think you're going to see him charge as quick as possible to get up there. He needs position. And as Kobe leads us back to the green, it is Justin Bonsignor to his outside as we are back up to full speed in the third position for this restart. It's Silk in the 16 and McKennedy, the leading championship contenders restart in row number two. Working off of turn number two, Kobe leads him down the back straightaway. Bonsignor, car number 51, right there in the number two spot. He looks down onto the inside, can't do it. And then Ronnie Silk, car number 16, rides tough right there in the number three spot. Silk took the third position from McKennedy. Those are your championship contenders. And Silk has not been to victory lane this season. He earned a NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour Championship earlier in his career. He knows how to race for points. But he told me earlier tonight, getting to victory lane is our priority. Hirschman has already picked up one spot. He's up to the number nine position. It's going to be fun to watch the number 60 car. He is right on the heels of Kyle Bonsignor and Lutz as we see the all-black number 60 that almost blends into the racing surface there behind the brightly colored Lutz and Bonsignor machines. Hirschman into eighth as Kobe continues to lead, and Kobe has opened up a seven or eight car length advantage over Justin Bonsignor, so this side-by-side -side action for top five positions is where we want to focus our attention as it includes the 60 of Hirschman. Craig Lutz riding back in the number six spot turned the quickest lap the last time around. He went an 18-1, and he is on the charge, too. But watching uh, Kyle back there in car number 22 and Hirschman in car number 60, uh, they're running eighth and ninth, and they're kind of caught up in a little bit of uh, traffic. Moving off at of turn number four, everyone trying to pick a different lane. Colby sets a good pace as he goes an 18-216 on that last lap. Andrew Krause just in front of Kyle Bonsignor there, and Krause was able to defend that position. Kyle Bonsignor with Hirschman in tow looked to have the room to make a pass as we see the 22 car going back to work once again on the New Jersey driver Krause. Krause using a lane a little bit higher, and Hirschman that time lost a few car lengths. Eric Goodale in the 58 right there to challenge him. Not Her what we were expecting after this restart. One of the things I noticed is Hirschman is working the outside much more than he did during when he was leading the race. So he probably feels that's the fast way around the speedway. If he's going to need the high side to return to the front, maybe laying his own rubber down there is going to help him later on as he's probably helping more and more drivers go up there to produce a lane higher in these turns. All race long, he didn't have to worry about passing. And now after that pit stop being boxed in in the infield, he has got to come from the ninth position on the restart. He's gained one position, and he has Kyle Bonsignor just in front of him. And as we were talking about Hirschman losing spots, how about Kyle Bonsignor? He was third, he was fourth, I'm sorry, when the caution came out. And now he's lost several positions as well. So both he and Hirschman needing to fight back to positions that they once held under green. A car to keep your eyes on is third place running Ronnie Silk. Ronnie now charges to the inside, going down into turn number three. And he's got that lane open right now. Will he be able to occupy the number two spot coming off of turn four? The Can't get it done. The defending champion of the tour in car number 51, Bonsignor, trying to hold off Silk. Silk, who is definitely in championship contention. He came into this event three points behind, just three. So that's really one position for him to take over the points lead from McKennedy in the 79 who's right behind him. So Silk knows what he has to do. He wants to win a race. He is in championship contention, but a championship without a victory, very unusual to achieve in motorsports. Silk has been oh so consistent, but he wants to cross that finish line first at some point this season, and it'll certainly help his championship stance. I'm watching Matt Hirschman. Matt is trying to switch around different lanes because he wants to go to the front, but he just can't get by that traffic in front of him. So now instead of going to the outside, he's going to the inside. Here we see Lutz and McKennedy just behind the, the Silk machine. Silk in that silver number 16 car, the former tour champion. 
And McKennedy, who seems to have really made the right changes. He was unhappy with the car after practice. He was unhappy with the car after qualifying. But he's right there with his championship nemesis. So when you've got a three-point lead, what better to do than to keep the guy that you're fighting for the title with right in view? Colby. So Colby's looking real good going down that back straightaway. He's got about a five-car advantage, and he is working a higher lane going down into turn number three. So apparently that outside lane is quicker, and we'll see if some of the other competitors will go to the outside as well. Exactly, exactly what we saw Hirschman trying to do just a few moments ago as we work lap number 91 of 150 here in the 66th Annual International Classic Weekend at the Oswego Speedway in Oswego, New York. Race leader Kobe in second spot, Justin Bonsignor. In third spot, Ron Silk. In the fourth position, championship points leader John McKennedy. In fifth, Craig Watts. Then Andrew Krause now in the top six. Kyle Bonsignor in seventh. Matt Hirschman, the early race leader, still back in eighth position. He can't seem to get a lane to get up and get around some of the traffic. When he goes to the outside, the inside lane seems to be quicker and then vice versa. We know Hirschman is a master of saving his equipment. At lap 93 right now, we do anticipate another caution flag or two over the final 56 laps or so. Maybe Hirschman is waiting for a late race run, understanding that maybe a couple of the cars in front of him would try to pit again. But Hirschman, who is a master of saving his equipment, may be doing just that, or maybe after that pit stop, the right set of sneakers is not what he needs. Maybe that car is not handling as well as we saw it earlier because now he's two or three car lengths behind the 22 machine. You know what's funny is your leader, Doug Colby, is turning only 18.420 laps. So he may be backing off just a little bit to save the equipment. Interesting lap times here as we approach the century mark of the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150 here at Oswego Speedway. How about Krause in the 24 car? He made no noise whatsoever in the first segment of this race. After the pit stop, he gained a few spots by positioning from the pits, but boy, he is really hanging on and doing a great job. Remember, Kyle Bonsignor in the 22 was a top three and top four car all through that first 60-some lap segment where we were under green, and now Krause in the 24, the New Jersey driver, able to hold off both he and Hirschman here in the top 10. John McKennedy in car number 79 running fourth, and Craig Lutz right behind him in car number 82. Them two are going at it for position right now, too as they go down the back straightaway, enter turn number three. And here again, shifting lanes, going to the inside and outside, trying to get a better traction. But they're all running right even, coming off of turn four and down the front straightaway. Here again, the leader, only turning only in 18.449. And it's enough to keep him out in front by about four or five car lengths over Justin Bonsignor. And boy, that time McKennedy seemed to have a window. If he had forced the issue, he may have been able to get inside of Silk, but once again, those two are campaigning for the championship and cooler heads prevailed. If that were two laps to go, maybe a different scenario, but McKennedy backed off and let Silk keep the position. Now a lapped car plays into the battle. And of course, when they come across the stripe this time, they're at lap number 101. So two thirds of the race is in the books and now it's showtime. Indeed it is. There's Silk in the 16 car and right on his heels, McKennedy. And then Lutz in that orange 82 machine. Lutz, who's really come into his own as a superstar performer in the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour these last couple of seasons. He told me earlier tonight, this is a strange place to drive. It doesn't really compare to most of the other tracks on the Wheeland Modified Tour, but he's made three or four starts here, and he's looking awfully good behind the two championship contenders in a top five position with less than 50 laps to go. Well, Bonsignor, who's running in the number two spot, he's got a lot of heat in those Hoosiers, and he is trying to close in. He's riding back in the number two spot. He's turning an 18-6. Your leader's turning an 18-4. So your leader has still got the advantage. As we've been very entertained watching the Silk and McKennedy battle, all the way back to Hirschman here, these cars all group right together. All the action that they are providing for us has really allowed Bonsignor and Kobe to escape. There's nearly half a straightaway now between Silk's number 16 car and the 51 of Justin Bonsignor in second. So with Kobe and Bonsignor being unchallenged, they have been able to bury this battle for other top five positions and run away with it. Meanwhile, Silk has to be concerned not only with his line, but the line that McKennedy is taking and try to defend that position. Very good, yes. 
And of course, when they go down into turn number three, one of the things I noticed, they try to shift up into a different lane and try to move up to the outside. Colby has bounced around on the inside and the outside of turn number three, but then holds that middle lane coming out of turn number four. And he's turning an 18-3, so he has picked it up. Some 25 to 30 laps after the wholesale pit stops, and Matt Hirschman has not been a factor in this event. He's only gained one position since the restart, so that pit stop may spell disaster for his hopes to become the all-time leading winner in modified action here at Oswego. But Kobe out in front, stretching his advantage just a little bit over Justin Bonsignor, and there's Hirschman right there. He's got the two of Hosfeld closing in on him, but Hirschman has really been unable to challenge Kyle Bonsignor, and again, Bonsignor behind Andrew Kraus. Kraus, who ran a smart first half of this race and he may have been the guy doing the best job of saving equipment because he is now solidly inside the top 10 and with two barn burning cars from the early stanza of this race behind him he has not wavered whatsoever in that number 24 machine 110 laps will be in this time around when they come off at turn four and cross the line and von senor who runs in the number two spot trying to close in trying to move in different lanes and so on but can't do it and they're both turning times in being 18.5, so a little bit slower, but nevertheless, they're still holding their pace. Kobe has pulled away from Bonsignor, but I believe that Bonsignor has pulled away even farther from the drivers in third, fifth, third through seventh or eighth here as we watch that battle. There you see Kobe at the bottom of the screen. There's Justin Bonsignor and all that space back to the silver 16 of Silk, who still has McKennedy and Lutz right on his heels. Ronnie Silk is running back in the number three spot. He has slowed down considerably as he's down to an 18.6, but behind him, an 18.599, so almost identical times. If they finish in this order, Silk has got to be pleased with his championship standing because he would be two points roughly ahead of McKennedy if they finished in this spot. And a top five run is always great, but his hope of claiming a first victory here today may be fading very quickly with how Kobe and Bonsignor have pulled away by nearly a full straightaway now as Silk is now concerned with defending his position from the advances of McKennedy. Lutz right there as well. I've got to believe that the McKennedy and Lutz cars are just about equal. And of this trio, Silk may be the slowest as McKennedy moves to the inside once again. And comes up onto the inside off the corner and he may have that position, yes. At the scoring line, he made it official by about half a car length. And now here comes Lutz as well. So Silk goes from perhaps taking the series points lead to losing even more ground to the 79 of McKennedy. It's now McKennedy in third spot. It's now the Lutz machine in fourth, and now Silk back to fifth. Lutz is back up to the number four spot now as he goes in 18-8, way off the pace, but nevertheless taking that fourth position. It's lap 115, and Doug Kobe in car number seven, the Tommy Baldwin racing entry. A three-time winner on the tour already this season, stretching out his advantage over the 51 of defending series champion, Justin Bonsignor. And now that we see that the 79 of McKennedy has made his way around the number 16 car, we're going to see if he can possibly close in to challenge the top two. It's not looking likely at this point as there's nearly a full straightaway of real estate and two lapped cars between McKennedy and the leaders. J.B. Fortin returns to pit road in the 34 car. Three cars have pulled in the pit area within the last lap and a half. This is very interesting. Something could be up. And if you're Doug Kobe, that's terrific news because that's less lap traffic, yeah. assuming that those drivers are experiencing a problem that he will have to weave through later. We see Hirschman there in the 60 being challenged by the two of Hosfeld. Hosfeld has spent many seasons driving the number 22 car. Very, very successful on this tour with nine career victories. And boy, he is all over the back bumper of Hirschman. Yes, he is. We pointed out that Hirschman had those problems on pit road that mired him back in ninth, but that car is clearly not handling the way that it did before. So I think the adjustments and the tire change may have been just as detrimental as the track position he lost when he had to back up from pit lane. Hosfeld all over Hirschman's rear bumper and the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor now enjoying maybe a car length or more. Oh, and there's contact yes. with Kraus. Kraus, who had made his way into the top 10, slowed down just briefly and was contacted in the rear by Kyle Bonsignor, bringing out the caution on lap 121 of 150. He backs away under his own power. 
boy, he had such a turnaround from the first half of this race to the second. Had to be so pleased with his progress, holding off two of the top contenders in the first stanza of Green Flag Racing. And then that incidental contact with the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor sends him around. And now, will anyone make a pit stop on lap 121, 122 by the time the pace truck rolls out? My first guess would be that Matt Hirschman may make his way down pit lane because that car is not handling anything like it did in the first portion no, of the race. It's not, and we're Boy, he had to jump on the brakes as well. As we see the replay, Hirschman may have even flat spotted the tires as Krauss spins off the front bumper of Kyle Ebersol, and we saw that tire smoke in the frame briefly. That was from Hirschman locking up the brakes. You're watching the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour on NBC Sports. Mod, Mod Classic 150. Craig Lutz is the leader, and he is going to be pulling right up behind that pace truck. The Burrett Motor Chevrolet pace truck comes in off of turn number four, makes the big left-hand turn into the pit area, and hammers down, coming here in the front straightaway. Bontior up in the number one spot with Lutz and Hosfeld running one, two, three. We may have underestimated Hosfeld in that number two car. Remember, he was all over the back bumper of Hirschman, and of course, Hirschman was the dominant car in the first segment of this race. Maybe Hosfeld has a little something for this field because he was able to keep pace with Hirschman. And now with only three cars, four cars in front of him, let's see what the white number two machine can do. Moving up off of turn number two. They're taking a higher lane coming off of turn number two. Lutz in car number 82 drops back to the number three spot. They come out of turn number four, and it's a big shuffle coming down here in the front straightaway. Briefly, Doug Kobe was three wide back there trying to return to the point position. The Oswego Speedway is awfully wide, but three abreast racing, never a good idea until you get to these late laps of the race when chances will be taken. And Kobe is doing exactly that to return to the front. Bonsignor in the 51, your race leader as we work lap 129. And Kyle, Kyle Bonsignor, his cousin, right in second with Lutzen Hosfeld. Lap times are in the 18 fours, so they have picked up just a little bit. Now they work down to between turns number three and four. Craig Lutz now going to the inside, now right back up onto the outside as he comes down here in the front straightaway. Right behind Hosfeld, the driver who's made more pit stops tonight than any other, Bobby Santos the third in car 44. He is now a top five machine as a result of the pit stop shuffle. He was on pit lane several times, and maybe they've got that car right as he is now in the top five. But look at this heated action going wheel to wheel in the top five. Matt Hirschman back in the number seven spot. And he's closing in now as he swings off the turn number two. We saw Lutz in the number 82 machine wheel to wheel there with Hosfeld as they do that one more time. Look at this action up front. Top four cars really putting on a show as we work lap 132. The Bonsignor boys still riding one and two with Lutz right there in the number three spot. Lutz trying to close in, looks down to the inside, going down into turn number three. He backs it up, puts it right back into position. Now looks down onto the inside again, coming off the fourth corner. It looked like there was some cousinly contact there that got Kyle in the 22 car just a little bit off as he had to back off from light bumper touch with leader Bonsignor. And now look at this, wheel to wheel. Lutz takes over the runner-up position and opens the door for Hosfeld. Chuck Hosfeld in the two car, out of retire. Oh, we got a caution flag. Cars up against the wall in turn three. Two machines up against the styrofoam barriers, bringing out the caution flag on lap 134 of 150. And boy, this caution flag may be exactly the opposite of what Kobe and Hirschman needed. Now we'll have less green flag laps for them to climb back into the top five. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour from the Oswego Speedway will be right back. The Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150. They're entering turn number four, ready to come out of turn number four. The Burrett Motor Chevrolet Pace Truck pulls up on the inside out of harm's way, and the green lights are on. And a drag race down the front straightaway with 11 laps to go. Lutz pulls right to the rear bumper of Justin Bonsignor, trying to take the second spot from Kyle Bonsignor. He does. And he has got it. Meanwhile, wheel-to-wheel -wheel action all the way back through the top 10 behind them. Lutz in that number two spot, looks down onto the inside, coming in between turns number one and two off of turn two. But Bonsignor, Justin, up there in that number one spot with about a two-car advantage. Hosfeld gets around Bonsignor's 22 machine. 
How about that? Chuck Hosfeld, who was not a factor in the first portion of this race, has figured out how to put himself in a podium position here as Justin Bonsignor in the 51 leads Craig Watts. Then it's Hosfeld, Kyle Bonsignor, Bobby Santos the third, and side-by-side -side action behind. The battle for the number one spot. Craig Lutz, he wants to win. He looks down on the inside, coming out of turn number two, can't do it, pulls it back up in the line. Drafts him going down the back straight away into the tricky number three corner. Now he tries to get a run up onto the outside, but look who comes up on the outside. It's Bonsignor Kyle right there in the number three spot. Hosfeld in the two car took a peek to the outside of Lutz. Lutz more than once since the restart has likely kissed the rear bumper of, of Bonsignor in the 51. Justin Bonsignor, you see there, taking a, a move to the inside to throw that block on Lutz. But you're right, Hosfeld, who's made a couple of outside peaks to take second position away, looks to have a very, very strong car that we did not see that from him in the early stages of this race. Lutz looking down on the inside as he goes down into the corner. Look at Hosfeld, two lanes up high, taking Boy. the big chance, and it cost him. It cost him a car length, but there are only five laps to go, and this is when you need to take chances at the Oswego Speedway. And Matt Hirschman, who is up to the number five spot, just turned the quickest lap of the race as he went an 18-1-1-7. And Lutz got sideways there, allowing Hosfeld to take over the second spot. Four laps remaining at car number two. Now advancing to position number two. As leader, Justin Bonsignor makes his way around the lap car. They are nose to tail in the top five positions. This time at the scoring line, three laps will remain. Second place runner gets up a little bit high, but he wants a run coming off that corner. And down the straightaway, can't do it, pulls back right in the line. Hosfeld's made a couple of bold moves just like that one in car number two, and it's put him in the second spot. Three laps remaining, and he has tried outside, he has tried inside, he has tried everything in car number two, and it's paid off as he's in the runner-up spot, but now two laps to go. Bringing it down here in the front straightaway, down into turn number one, off of turn number two. Bonsignor, he's got about a one-car length lead going down into turn number three. Ladies and gentlemen, the white flag is in the air. Final lap of the Toyota Bud Mod Classic at the Oswego Speedway. And Chuck Hosfeld has come from deep in the field. The challenger race leader right up to the bumper of Justin Bonsignor. Down the back straightaway. A few car lengths ahead of what's in third. They will slug it out in turn four for the victory. Checkered flag will be displayed and coming to the line. Hosfeld peeks to the inside. It will be Justin Bonsignor by less than a car length. The NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour from the Oswego Speedway will be right back. Welcome back to the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150 at Oswego Speedway, where Justin Bonsignor is down celebrating in victory lane for the third time this season. Let's send it down and hear from tonight's winner. We've been struggling for where we feel we should be running this year, and I mean, that's not to be, you know, whiny or anything like that. We just we hold ourselves to a high standard, and... It's been an up and down summer. We had a few issues that took us, you know, put us behind and then uh, just haven't had the speed or the consistency week in and week out or even from run to run. We're just chasing a car and we got it good tonight. We, uh, I wasn't too happy with it after qualifying, but um, guys just stuck with it and it was really tight on that second set of tires. And I don't know if uh, Doug just got tired of winning or if I faked him out. Uh, I faked like I was coming to Pit but we weren't coming and uh, it was a gift getting a lead. Let's take a look at the unofficial results of tonight's race from the Toyota Bud Mod Classic 150. Taking second tonight right on Justin Bonsignor's bumper was Chuck Hosfeld. Craig Lutz came home third. Kyle Bonsignor fourth. And rounding out the top five was Matt Hirschman. John McKennedy came home sixth while Doug Kobe was in seventh. Finishing ninth was Aaron Goodell, who is a championship points contender. Taking a look at the second page, Donnie Leah finished 11th. Championship points contender Ron Silk came home in 13th, and Tommy Catalano finished the night in 17th place. As we look at the third page, J.B. Fortin, Patrick Emmerling, and Tyler Rakema got in some trouble tonight, finished in the back of the pack. Current point standings look like this going into the final three races. John McKennedy extends his lead over Ron Silk by 10 points by finishing seven positions better. With his win tonight, Justin Bonsignor jumps to third place and sitting just 17 points from McKennedy. And Eric Goodale is now 27 points back in fourth place. So even though there's more space between each driver point-wise, every race is going to be raced like it's the final one of the year as these drivers will be giving it their all.
For the next battle on the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Touring Series here on NBC Sports, we head back to Riverhead for the third time this season. Who will become that much closer to the title? Catch it right here on September 25th at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. It was an eventful evening here at Oswego Speedway. A couple of incidents that slowed us down, but ended in a battle for the checkered flag. Congratulations to the 51 team on getting their third win of the season and staying in the championship battle with only three races to go. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, NBC Sports is your home for the NASCAR Arca Menard Series East and West Racing and the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.